Welcome to the owner's class for the Singer Professional 9100 sewing machine. My name's Devin and I'm going to get you all set up and started on your brand new sewing machine. The first thing we're going to do is go through all the things in the box and how they look when you first pull them out. So first you have your machine, obviously. You have your extension table right here. This is going to help you work on bigger projects and give you a nice big working space to sew on. You have your instruction manual, so you have that right here. Your instruction manual is very important. You want to hang on to it. Don't throw it away or lose it. It's full of lots of good information about how to set up your machine, how to operate it. Super important, so definitely hang on to that. You also have a quick start guide. This is kind of like a cheat sheet, so if you, if you have to look something up really fast about how to thread your machine, set it up, or wind a bobbin, you can check out your quick start guide. You have your foot pedal, and you have your power cord. And lastly, if you open your storage compartment right here, that's where all the rest of your accessories are. So there's some presser feet, a seam ripper, some spare bobbins and needles, and some other things that we'll talk about eventually. We're gonna go over how to get your machine set up, so how to wind a bobbin and how to thread it. First, let's go over the parts of your machine. For our tour of the machine parts, we're going to start with something really easy. That's the power button. The power button is on the right side of your machine, right next to the cords. So we're going to turn it on, the light will come on, the LCD screen will come on, so you know your machine is turned on. These two cords on the side of the machine, one goes to the power source, to the wall, the other one goes to the pedal on the floor. That's how you're going to operate your sewing machine. So above all of the cords, we have the hand wheel. The hand wheel is the manual version of pushing the pedal. When you turn the hand wheel, you want to make sure that you only ever turn it towards you. That's the way that it was designed to move, so just remember to only turn it towards you. As we turn it, you can see that there's a silver hook bobbing up and down over here. This is called the take-up lever, and that will be important once we get to the threading. Moving to the top of the machine, we have a handy little carrying handle right here. So if you need to move your machine or take it somewhere, you can use the handle. Right here is your tension dial. Tension, when you're sewing, refers to the tightness of the stitches. For the most part, you can leave the tension dial set at four. You really only need to change it if you're doing a specific technique or if you're doing fine-tuning adjustments, but for the most part when you sew, you can just leave that set right at four, which is the middle of the range of numbers. Moving down to the front of the machine over here, we have our speed control. This is a nice handy feature. This sets the maximum speed that the motor will run when you push the pedal. So if you want to only sew very slow, you can put this all the way at the first little arrow, and even if you push the pedal all the way down on the floor, the machine will only sew slow. If you want to just kind of test it out at first, just put it at a medium speed, and that will give you a good idea for a place to start. Below, we have several buttons here. This button is the programmable needle up down, so this can determine whether your machine stops with the needle down or the needle up. We have a stitch tie off button, so this can be used to tie off your stitches as you're sewing. This is the reverse button, so we'll use that to back stitch, which is going to be how we secure our seams when we sew. And then we have our start stop button, so this is how we can operate the machine without the foot pedal. We can just use the start stop button if we want to. Moving down to where the needle is, we have this piece right here. This is called the presser foot. The presser foot is going to press down on the fabric when we sew. If you feel underneath it, there's some rough little pieces called the feed teeth or the feed dogs. These pieces grab the fabric and pull it through as you sew, and the presser foot presses down against it as you're sewing so that they have some leverage to be able to grab the fabric. If you reach through the machine right here, there's a lever that actually lets you raise and lower the presser foot. And it's kind of like park and drive. So when your presser foot is up, your machine is in park. When you're ready to sew and go somewhere, you're going to shift into drive by lowering your presser foot. When you're all finished sewing, you're going to put it back into park by raising your presser foot. Coming over here, we have our front panel of our machine, and we are going to explore that in more depth in the next segment. Let's take a closer look at the front panel of our machine. We have an LCD screen here that's displaying what stitch your machine is set on and all the settings. And we have some more buttons underneath. This is kind of like the mission control center of your machine. This is how you tell it what to do. These buttons down here, all the numbers, are your direct select stitches. 
So this is uh, how you choose some more common stitches that you'll probably use all the time. So you have your straight stitches, some zigzag stitches, a few stretch stitches, and a hem stitch. You even have your buttonhole right here. But this machine has over 400 stitches. So to access those other stitches, you have some pull-down menus at the bottom of the machine. So you'll see there's three different stitch menu cards that pull out. The way that you access these cards is by pushing the mode button up here. When the first light is illuminated, that's your direct selection stitches. When you push mode, that goes to the second menu, which is the very first card right here. Pushing that light or pushing that button again moves the light down to your decorative stitches, which is the next menu. And then finally, you have your two alphabets right here. So there's the first alphabet and the second alphabet. So that's how you access all those stitches that your machine can do. The buttons directly under the LCD screen are the controls for your stitch length and width. So when you push these, this is your width control. So that's the wider and narrower. And here's your length, so longer and shorter. The machine will automatically go to the default length and width settings when you choose a stitch. But you can of course change them if you want to change them. If you do change them and you want to change back to the default, you can click back until the number is highlighted with a box around it. That's how you know it's the default setting. You'll notice over here I've put on my extension table. This can be really useful when you're working on projects such as a quilt. When you're piecing or quilting, it just gives you a really nice big flat workspace to sew in for larger projects. So now we're ready to set up our machine, wind a bobbin and thread it. So first of all, the big picture, how a sewing machine works, there's an upper thread and there's a lower thread. So we're gonna start by taking care of the lower thread. You want to open your bobbin compartment, which is this clear piece right here by the presser foot. And there's a slider to the right of it. We're gonna slide it to the right. It's gonna pop open and we're gonna remove the cover. Inside, you will find an empty bobbin. A bobbin is essentially a baby spool that we're gonna put thread on. So we're gonna set this aside for a second and we're gonna go in our storage compartment and we're gonna grab a spool cap. We're gonna need this for our thread. Your machine comes with a couple extra bobbins. So in case you need to get some more or fill them if you fill all the ones that come with the machine, make sure that you buy Singer Class 15 transparent bobbins. See, these are the bobbins that are designed to work with your machine. So these are the bobbins that are gonna work the best and make your machine sew the best. The Class 15 transparent bobbins. Okay, so we're gonna take our thread, our sewing thread, and we're gonna put it on the spool pin. That is a horizontal white bar that's on the top of the machine. And we're gonna take the spool cap and we're gonna put it right on the other end to keep our thread on the spool pin. Now, if we look at the top of our machine, there are a few little diagrams that are gonna help you remember how to thread your machine for both winding a bobbin and for sewing. So first we'll look at this little diagram. The dotted line is the thread path for winding a bobbin. I'm gonna take my thread tail and I'm gonna look at the diagram. You'll see the first stop is this little thread guide right here. So you can go behind it and just hook it right through that little guide like that. The next stop is the bobbin winding tension disc, which is this piece right here. It looks like a screw. We're gonna do just what the picture shows and we're going to bring the thread around it like this. It's very important that the thread goes under the head of the screw and above the washer. You should kind of slip it under the head of the screw and feel a little resistance on it. Once you tug on it, once it's under there, you know it's in the right spot. Now we're going to take our bobbin and look at the flat sides. There's a little hole in each side. You can just choose one of the sides. It doesn't matter which one. There's no top or bottom. You're going to take the thread and thread it up through one of the holes from the inside to the outside. So again, we're starting in the middle, the inside of the spool, and we're coming out the top like that. We'll grab our thread tail, hang on to it, Take your bobbin and push it down on the spindle over here. This is the bobbin winding spindle. You want to make sure you push it down all the way. If you don't, you might accidentally wind thread under the bobbin, and that's not what we want to do. To tell the machine we need to wind a bobbin, we're going to pop that spindle over to the right. That's going to put the machine in bobbin winding mode, and it'll know that you have to wind a bobbin. So now we're ready to wind it. So we're going to hold onto the tail of our thread, and we're going to push on the pedal. 
it'll start winding. If your bobbin isn't winding very fast, then take a look at your speed control, because remember, this is the uh, maximum speed of the motor, which also winds the bobbin, so you can turn that speed all the way up and it will wind faster. After you wind for a few seconds, we'll stop and we'll trim the thread close to the bobbin because the tail's buried, it's not going to come undone. And you can just keep filling until your bobbin is full, it will stop automatically. If you're only going to sew for a little bit, you can stop earlier, but if this is your first bobbin, you might as well fill it up all the way. Once you're finished, you're going to undo what you did, so you're going to pop this back over to the left, and you're going to take the bobbin off and cut the thread anywhere to separate it. And now you have a beautifully wound bobbin. The next thing we'll take care of is the upper thread. So for now, we're going to set our bobbin aside. We're going to unthread our thread from our bobbin winding path. And now we're going to thread the upper thread. If you look at the top of the machine, again, there's some arrows and diagrams to help you know how to thread it. Before you thread, though, you want to check two things. First, you want to make sure your presser foot is up. So remember, there's a lifter right here that can move your presser foot up and down. You want to make sure that that is up. You also want to look for your take-up lever, and you want to make sure that that is all the way up. If you can't see it, go ahead and turn the hand wheel towards you until you see your take-up lever. So the first stop for our upper thread is the same as for bobbin winding. It's this first thread guide. So you're going to hold the thread and just go behind it and forward to get it right in that first thread guide right there. The second stop is this white piece. So you're going to go behind it and then kind of just floss it right in there underneath that white piece. You'll go down this channel right here. Do a U-turn around this white piece. For the take-up lever, you're going to mimic what this arrow is doing on the top of the machine. So you're going to start on the right, you'll go back, over, and then bring the thread forward. It's really important that the thread catches in the front of the take-up lever, so make sure you see the thread right in the front there before you keep going. The next stop is another thread guide right below this arrow right here. So we're going to slip it behind on the right like that. And the very final stop before the needle is one last thread guide, which is this horizontal bar right above the needle. So I'm going to hold the thread horizontally and again, just kind of think of flossing. We're going to floss it right in there so that the thread is behind that horizontal bar. To thread the eye of the needle, you can do it manually if you want. You'll thread it right through the eye, front to back, or you can use the needle threader that's on the machine. To do that, you want to first make sure the needle is in the highest position, very important. And we're going to take our needle threaded level, lever, push it down, and you want to snag the thread in this first hook, and then bring it around under these prongs and let go. And it's going to pull the thread through the eye of the needle in a little loop. You can grab that loop and pull the thread the rest of the way through. Now our needle is all threaded. So now we have to put our bobbin in. We are going to take our bobbin and it's going to go right here in the bobbin compartment. So now we're ready to put our bobbin in. We're going to hold it like the letter P. We're going to imagine this is the stem of the P, this is the top part. Holding it just like that, we're going to drop it in the bobbin compartment and then we're just going to follow the arrows. So we want to pull the thread up to this arrow and then down and around, do a little U-turn around this piece and come down here for the final arrow and the thread will get cut by a little blade in there. At this point, we can put the cover back on the bobbin case. The very last thing we need to do is use the upper thread to draw up the bobbin thread. To do that, we're going to hold on the upper thread with our left hand, and we're going to hand crank through a full down and up of the needle. So I'm going to hand crank the wheel towards me, and when I'm holding the left thread with some tension, you'll see that it grabbed the bobbin thread and pulled it up, and here's the tail of it right here. So now we are all ready to sew. I'm just going to take the upper thread, put it through the foot and towards the back of the machine, and we're good to go. Now that our threading is all done, it's time for us to do a little test sewing and just double check that we did everything correctly. So I'm going to go to a regular straight stitch. That is the number one on your direct selection menu right here. That's a good stitch for sewing a seam, so that's what we're going to test. And we can just go with the default length and width settings right here that the machine sets automatically.
I have a little test swatch here of the fabric that I'll be sewing my real seam on. I'm going to take it, we're going to put it under the presser foot. To the right of the foot you'll see a bunch of lines. These are your guidelines for sewing seams. So I'm going to choose the 5 8 inch line right here and follow that. Keep the right edge of the fabric along that line as I sew and that's how I'm going to sew straight. So we'll put our presser foot down to get ready to sew and we'll push the pedal and just sew right along this edge. Alrighty, when we get to the other side, we'll stop, lift our pressure foot, and cut our thread on the thread cutter, and take a look at our stitches. Looks pretty good from the front, and we'll flip it over, and looks good from the back too. So it looks like our threading is good to go. If your stitching doesn't look quite like this, if it looks a little bit wonky, like maybe you have some loopy threads, or the back is starting to get all tangly and thread nest looking, then this might be a sign that you need to re-thread. So if your stitching looks like this, you can go ahead and unthread the top and the bottom threads and then re-thread and give it another go at testing. Now that we know our threading is good to go, we can sew our seam for real. So I have two pieces of fabric here that I've pinned together with the right sides together. That means the printed sides are touching. And you always want to pin your seams when you sew them. That's because the fabric might wiggle around if it's not pinned. So the pins just hold everything in place so you know where they're going to be and where your pieces are going to be as you're sewing. So for my seam, I'm going to leave it on my straight stitch, so that's number one, on your direct selection menu. And I'm going to take my fabric and put it under the presser foot. And again, I'll use my 5 8 inch guideline on the right side of my foot and I want the fabric to be pretty much even with the, the needle right at the top. So I'll put my presser foot down. When you select your regular straight stitch, number one, there will automatically be a tie off at the beginning. This is how your machine secures the threads. So it will sew in place a few times when we start sewing. All right, I'm gonna go for it. So there's my tie off and now I'm gonna keep going. When I get to a pin, I'm gonna take that out. You don't wanna sew over your pins. You can break your needle or damage your machine. And as my machine sews, I'm going to not push or pull the fabric through the machine. The machine pretty much does that on its own. It's just my job to gently guide it and keep it straight as I sew. When I get to the end, I want to make sure that I secure the end of the seam too. So I'm going to stop just before the end and I'm going to do something called a back stitch. So that's sewing backwards a few stitches and then back forward. So I'm going to hold the reverse button, push the pedal down, and then I'll click the reverse button again to go back forward. I'll lift my presser foot, pull my project out, slice my threads on the thread cutter, and there is my beautifully sewn seam. The second part of sewing a seam, which is a crucial part and a part you don't want to skip, is pressing the seam. I'm going to take my fabric and put it on my pressing board right here, but you can just use a regular old ironing board. And I'm going to press this seam open. So that means I'm going to take my iron and separate the sides of the seam allowance and just press it open like this. Pressing will make your projects look nice and professional and finished and it will help all of your pieces line up with each other as you are constructing something. So you definitely don't want to skip it. After you sew a couple big projects, you're going to want to change your sewing machine needle because sewing machine needles get dull after a while as you use them. It's really easy to do that, so I'm going to show you how to do it. First, I'm going to unthread the needle just to get that out of the way. It's always a good idea to turn your, your machine off when you're working with a sewing machine needle just to be safe, so I'm going to do that, turn it off. To take the needle out, I'm going to unscrew the needle clamp screw, which is this screw right here. If it's a little tight, you can take the screwdriver that came with your machine and use that to loosen the needle clamp screw if you need to. So once I loosen that and pull it out, the needle should come right out. If you look at the needle, one side of it is flat. That is the side that's going to go towards the back when you insert a new needle. So the thick part, the top part, is the part that's going to go in the machine, and the flat side of that thick part goes towards the back. So I'll hold it that way, flat side facing away from me. I'm going to put my presser foot down just to give myself a little bit more space. And I'm going to insert the needle into the machine. 
Then I'll go ahead and tighten up that needle screw, the needle clamp screw. And that's all there is to changing the needle. So the, your machine comes with regular point needles. Those are appropriate for using on woven fabrics like this quilting cotton that we just sewed or denim or other similar fabrics that are woven. If you want to try to sew some stretchy fabrics like t-shirts or sweatshirts or other knit fabrics, then you're going to want to get some ballpoint needles. Those are designed for sewing on knit fabric, so that's what you're going to want to use on those. And if you want more in-depth information about all the needles that are available, you can check that out on the Singer website. So you'll notice that I have the extension table on my machine. This is an accessory that comes with the machine that's really useful for working on a nice big flat surface. So whenever you're doing anything that you need to have nice and flat, like for instance this pocket, it makes things way easier. So I'm going to be sewing around the pocket and pivoting at all these corners to attach it. I have my regular pressure foot on and I selected just my regular straight stitch, which is stitch number one on the direct selection menu. I'm going to line it up the first top corner right here, just inside, and I'm going to put the presser foot down. So now to select the programmable needle down, I'm going to touch this button right here. And you'll notice on the screen there's a needle icon that has a down arrow. So the needle's gone down in the fabric, and now every time I stop sewing, the needle will end down and be holding the fabric in place like a little anchor. So I'm going to start sewing. It's going to do an automatic tie-off for me. And then I'll sew along the first edge of the pocket. When I get to this first corner, I'm going to stop. The needle ends down so I can just lift the foot, turn the fabric, and keep going. Next corner, same thing. Lift the fabric, turn it. Lift the fabric and pivot, and I don't even have to think about cranking the needle down. When I get to the end, I'll end with the back stitch. The needle will end down in the fabric, so to easily lift it, I'm just going to touch the programmable needle up-down button again. It's going to raise the needle. I'll lift my presser foot and pull out my fabric. And there is my beautifully sewn pocket with all of those pivots. Done super easy. Buttonholes can seem kind of scary to new sewers, but they're really fairly easy, especially if you know all the steps that you have to do. I'm going to show you how to do a one-step buttonhole on the Singer Professional 9100. I have a swatch here of some wool fabric that would be commonly used for a coat or another outerwear garment. I have a double layer and I have some interfacing inside just like it would be on a placket on the front of a coat. So we are going to be stitching a buttonhole right on this piece of wool. The first thing that I need to do is mark my placement for the buttonhole. So I have the button that I'll be using. I'm going to place that right on the fabric where I want it to be. And then I'm going to mark its position on one side with a line. So I'm marking the side that's closest to the edge of the fabric, the fold of the front of the placket. Once I have that first line drawn, I'm going to draw a second line, perpendicular, so I'm making a capital T shape. That's going to be my mark for how I do my buttonhole. So my fabric's ready, now I have to get my machine ready. First thing I'm going to do is choose a buttonhole stitch. So on the 9100, you can choose a regular standard bar tack buttonhole by selecting the zero on the direct selection menu. That's a very common buttonhole, so that's why it's super easy right on the front. All of the length and width settings are set automatically for you. There are several other buttonholes though. If you wanted to go to the second stitch menu by clicking the mode button and pulling out the first menu card, there's stitches 14 through 21. Those are all buttonholes. So you have some keyhole buttonholes, some round buttonholes, you even have a stretch buttonhole. So there's lots of buttonholes to play around with. We'll be doing a standard Bartek buttonhole, so the one on the direct selection menu. So once we choose that stitch, that's all we have to do, everything's set for us, we're going to find our buttonhole foot. The buttonhole foot looks like this. 
It has a picture of a button right at the top and it's labeled with a D. So the way that this foot works, the button is going to fit in this upper compartment. So this slides up and down. It can fit a variety of size buttons. So we're going to open it up and place our button right inside and then close it until the button is snugly held right in there. Down here is a metal pin, so this is how we're going to attach the buttonhole foot to our machine. So I'm going to take off the standard presser foot by pushing on the presser foot release lever right behind the needle right there. I will put this foot aside, and I'm going to put the buttonhole foot on the machine with the button to the back of the needle. So the button's behind the needle, and I'm going to put that pin right under the presser foot holder and gently lower the presser foot holder down until it snaps into place. You might have to move the foot around a little bit in order to find the place where it snaps in. I'm also going to pull down my buttonhole lever, which is this lever right here. You want to make sure you pull it down all the way, and you also want it to be in between these two prongs sticking out on the left side of your buttonhole foot. These prongs are how your machine is going to know when to turn around based on the size of the button, so it's important that this is all the way down and that it's between those two prongs. Okay, so my machine is all set up. Now it's time to sew my buttonhole. I'm going to take my fabric and place it under the foot. And if you need to, you can use the presser foot lifter to raise the presser foot even further, just to get it under there. And to line it up, you want to get that first horizontal line that we made right in the little window of the presser foot, right here. It should be uh, pretty much filling up that window. And then the second line we made, the perpendicular line, should be centered on the foot, so going directly up and down the foot this way. Once you have that all set, you can go ahead and just kind of hold the upper thread out of the way and start sewing. And the machine does all the movement. It's just your job to kind of manage the fabric, make sure it's not getting caught up on anything. This machine starts at the bottom and stitches up for the buttonhole, so just keep that in mind as you're lining up your fabric. And you'll push the pedal down until the machine stops on its own. So at this point, it's stopped. We're all finished with our buttonhole. So I'm going to lift my presser put foot and pull out my fabric and trim my thread tails. And here is my beautifully stitched buttonhole. At this point, I would take a hand sewing needle and thread both upper threads through the eye and bring them to the back of the fabric and tie all the thread tails in a knot and just cut them off. All right, so our buttonhole is stitched, but the button can't get through because it's still a solid piece of fabric, so we need to open it. To do that, I'm going to take two straight pins. I'm going to use these for protection so that I don't accidentally cut through my buttonhole. I'm going to put one at each end at the bar tacks at each end, so that's the top and bottom stitches. The pins are going to prevent me from slicing through my thread. I'll take the seam ripper that came with my machine, and I'm going to go right in the center, down through all of the layers, fabric and everything, being very careful not to cut through my thread. And I will cut all the way to the end with the seam ripper, and it'll hit that pin and prevent me from going through my stitches. Then I'll turn it around, and I will slice right through the other side to open my buttonhole. So I can take my pins out, and my buttonhole is open and ready for a button. So if I was doing a whole row of these down the front of a coat, the one-step buttonhole is really helpful because the machine does all of the figuring out of the settings and when to start and stop and turn around, so they would all look exactly the same and beautiful. So see, buttonholes are easy. Most people think of sewing on buttons, they think of something that takes a really long time and that you have to do by hand and it's very tedious, but you can actually attach buttons with a sewing machine and it's a lot faster and a lot easier. So I'm going to show you how to sew on buttons with the Singer Professional 9100. I have a swatch of wool fabric here that is just like fabric for a coat, as if I was making a coat and it has some interfacing on the inside like a front placket would have. I've already stitched a buttonhole on it, so now I'm going to stitch on the corresponding button. First, I need to set up my machine. So I'm going to change my foot. So first, I'm going to drop off the regular presser foot. 
While that's off, I'm going to go ahead and drop the feed dogs or the feed teeth. The reason I'm going to do that is because I want to attach my button stationary. I don't want the fabric to move, so I don't want the teeth grabbing the fabric and pulling on it. To do that, I'm going to take off my removable storage compartment. I'm going to reach behind the machine and I'm going to switch the drop feed. So the feed dogs are actually going to drop below the needle plate and they won't touch the fabric. Put my storage compartment back on. Now I'm going to attach my button sewing foot. So this looks like this. It has a little rubber gripper on it, so it's going to grip the button as I stitch it on. There's a pressure foot pin right here. That's where we're going to attach it. So I'm going to put that right under the pressure foot holder. You might have to raise the pressure foot extra high. And then I just want to lower the pressure foot lifter gently down on the foot until it snaps into place. You might have to wiggle it around a little to find the point where it snaps. So on the 9100, there's a specific stitch for sewing on buttons, which is pretty awesome because that means all the settings are set for you for the most part. So to get to that stitch, it's actually on our first submenu of stitches right here. It's stitch number 25 on that first menu. So to access that, we're going to click the mode button that's going to bring us to this second menu of stitches. And then we're going to select stitch 25 by just typing 25. Now we're set on the button sewing stitch. The only thing that we have to set is the width. So the button sewing stitch is like a zigzag stitch where the needle goes back and forth. And you want to make sure the stitch width, so the distance between each stitch, is the same as the distance between the holes on your button. So now my machine is all set and I'm ready to attach my button. So I'm going to grab my fabric. I'm going to put it under the presser foot. And I'm going to put my button under as well, right in the place where I want to attach it. And you may need to raise the presser foot a little bit to get the button under. And you want the holes in the button to be centered right in that little space between the prongs of the presser foot. So before we push the pedal, we want to test to make sure our width setting is the correct width for the holes in our button. You don't want to just push the pedal because the needle might hit the button and break. So I'm going to hand crank through a few stitches. So I'll test one, and then I'll test two. So my needle is clearing my button, so I'm good to go. I'm going to push the pedal until the machine stops sewing. It's going to attach the button and tie off for me. Once the machine is done sewing, I'll lift the presser foot, pull out my fabric, and now I can trim the thread close to the button because my machine tied off for me, which was very nice of it. So we'll cut the back threads as well. And here is my beautifully sewn button. Way easier than hand sewing. Once you're done attaching buttons, what you want to do before you start sewing anything else, just remember to raise your feed dogs or your feed teeth back up. So to do that, you're going to slide off your storage compartment. You're going to flip that switch the other way and then hand crank through a full revolution of the needle going up and down and you'll see your feed teeth pop back up. So now that you know how to sew on buttons and how easy it is, there's lots of different ways you can play around with the technique of attaching them. You can see that you can attach wide buttons, medium ones, narrow ones. You can change the width setting on the button sewing stitch to, have, uh, to accommodate different width of holes on your buttons. You can use buttons with exaggerated holes and a narrow zigzag. If you're attaching a four hole button, then you can do two sets of stitches across the two sets of holes. Or you could, for instance, do um, a cross, an X pattern of stitching, so going diagonally across both pairs of holes. You can even play around with changing thread colors and patterns and designs when you attach them. There's lots of different possibilities and it's really easy. So now you know how to do it and you can get creative. Zippers can seem kind of scary if you're a new sewer, but they don't have to as long as you know the steps involved in installing one. So I'm going to show you how to put in a centered zipper on the Singer Professional 9100, just like in this skirt in progress. Here we have a centered zipper right here. This is what we're going to go through the steps of doing. This is a very versatile thing to know how to do. You can use it in garments, obviously, like this one. You can also use it in tote bags and home decor projects. So it's really not scary at all. So let's go through the steps of doing a centered zipper. I'm going to start 
by sewing my two pieces of fabric together. So these are the two skirt back pieces. So these will be opened up and then the zipper will be installed right down the center. I've pinned the center back edge together and I have a different colored pin in to mark the position of the bottom of the opening. So as far down as the zipper is going to go. I'm going to start by basting, which is a temporary stitch, the top part of the seam, and then I'll sew, for real, a permanent stitch for the rest of the seam. So I'm going to set up my machine with a regular straight stitch, which is number one, and I'm going to turn my length all the way up, as high as it will go. And then I'm going to deselect the stitch fix. This is something automatic that is really convenient, um, but in this case, we don't want our stitch fix to happen because we don't want a back stitch or our stitch to be permanent at the top. We just want to start sewing. So we deselected the stitch fix button. I'm going to start at the top using my 5 8 inch seam guide right here on the right side. I'm going to put my presser foot down, and again, because this is temporary, we're just going to start sewing. I'm going to take out my first pin because I'm almost there. So as you sew, you just want to keep your fabric nice and straight. I'll take out my pins as I go so I don't sew over them and break a needle. When I get to my marker pin, I'm going to stop and I'm going to change to a regular stitch length. So that is going back down to the default length of 2.5 and I can remember that's the default because it's highlighted by a little box. I'm going to start by doing a back stitch, so I'll sew forward a few and then hold the back stitch button down to back up and then keep sewing. So now I'm going to sew all the way to the bottom, taking out my pins as I go, and at the bottom I'm going to do another back stitch. I'll lift my presser foot, cut my threads, and here is my center back seam. And now I'm going to go take it to the ironing boards and press it open. I just pressed my seam open and it's all nice and flat and crisp now. This is something you definitely don't want to skip. Uh, if you press your seam open, it means that your zipper installation is going to go way better. If you don't press your fabric, your zipper is not going to look very good and it's not going to go in properly. So definitely don't skip the pressing. Okay, so we are ready to attach our zipper. So I'm going to take my zipper that I have here. I'm going to unzip it a little ways and I want to lay it face down, so that means teeth side down, right in the center of my seam right here. And I want to put the top of the zipper tape right along the top of the fabric. And I'm going to put in a few pins to hold it in place. So the part up here where it's unzipped, you still just want to get both sides of the teeth right along the seam. Put in a few pins just to hold it in place, like that. And then down here, we'll just keep centering the teeth. And I'm going to put a pin in the middle and then one pin near the bottom. When you put your zipper down on the fabric, remember to keep the pull facing up. This is going to make your life way easier in a couple steps. So have the pull sticking up towards the top of the skirt. So now I'm going to go back to my basting stitch. So that just means a really long straight stitch. So I'm going to touch stitch number one, which it still is on and I'm going to put the length all the way up. And if you touch the number one again, just remember to deselect the stitch fix because that will be selected automatically and since this is a basting stitch, we want to be able to take it out later, so deselecting that just makes that easier. I'm going to also switch my presser foot to a zipper foot. So this is my zipper foot that came with my machine. The whole point of a zipper foot is to be able to sew close to something that's bulky, like a zipper, without the presser foot getting in the way. So it's just a little more streamlined down here where you're sewing. It has an extra wide presser foot pin right here, this, this horizontal bar, so you can attach it on either side of this pin. I'm going to take my regular presser foot off by pushing my presser foot release lever. Put that aside. And for this first step, I'm going to attach the foot to the left side of that presser foot pin. So I'm going to put that under the presser foot holder and just gently lower it down until it snaps into place and then raise my presser foot. So the bulk of my presser foot should be to the right of the needle. 
When you're using a zipper foot, a little safety caution, it's very important to only ever use it with a straight stitch and be very, very cautious about moving the needle because the space where you're sewing is really tiny. So it's very easy to accidentally have the needle be over the metal part of the foot if you start moving the needle around. And if you do that and start sewing, you're gonna break your needle because it's gonna hit the metal. So just be very cautious and use only the straight stitch when you're using your zipper foot. Okay, so now it's time to baste our zipper to our fabric. So I'm going to put the skirt under, I'm starting at the top, and the goal is just to sew along the edge of the zipper tape. So I'm gonna put my presser foot down, take my first pin out, and again, this is temporary, so we don't have to backstitch, you can just start sewing. Take this pin out. So when you get close to the pull, you're gonna stop, crank your needle down into the fabric, lift your presser foot, and just zip up the zipper so the pull goes past the presser foot. If you try to sew right alongside the pull, the width of the pull and the size of it will kind of push your needle and your foot over and your stitching line will go a little wonky. So just zip the pull right past and you'll prevent that from happening. So now I can just keep basting, taking my pins out, making sure my zipper stays centered on the seam until I get pretty much to the bottom. Right there. I'm going to lift my presser foot, cut my threads, and now I'm just going to flip the whole thing around. So I'm starting at the bottom of the zipper, and I'm going to baste up the other side to make sure that side of the zipper is held as well. This side's a little bit faster because you don't have those pins to take out. And again, when you get close to the pull, You'll end with your needle down, you'll lift your presser foot and just push the zipper right past it. Lower your presser foot and keep sewing. Okay, so my zipper is now basted on. The reason we basted the zipper on first is because now we're going to top stitch from the right side of the skirt so that we can see our good side, the good side of our skirt as we sew. And the basting stitches hold the zipper in place since we can't really watch it as we're sewing since we're sewing from the other side. The basting stitches just make sure that your zipper is not gonna move around and it's gonna stay nice and centered. So we need to go back to a regular length stitch. So that is staying still on the stitch number one and just going back down to 2.5 stitch length. I'm going to place my skirt under the foot and I've marked on my fabric where the bottom of my original basting stitches are. So remember when we basted the seam together and stopped and did a back stitch? So I marked that on the fabric. Um, so this is where I'm going to set up and start sewing. You want to make sure that this point is not anywhere near the bottom zipper stop because that's metal. So you don't want to sew over that. You want to make sure you're not sewing over that stop. Alrighty, I'm going to start about a quarter of an inch before the seam and I'm lining my needle up with that mark and I'm going to start by just sewing straight over the zipper to the other side and stopping at about the same point on the other side. So I'm going to stop with my needle down about a quarter of an inch out. I'm going to lift my presser foot and pivot the fabric and I'm going to be top stitching all the way along this edge of the zipper. And so the goal here is to just use your zipper foot and just kind of glide along the seam. You want to keep the left edge of the presser foot lined up with that center seam and just stitch the whole way. When you get close to your pull, it's going to be the same idea as the other times. We'll stop with our needle down, we'll lift our presser foot and we'll reach under our fabric, find our zipper pull and just push it past the presser foot. And if you need to, you can raise the presser foot even further to be able to get that pull past it. We'll lower our presser foot and keep going. When we get all the way up to the top, this is our permanent seam, so that means we're going to do a back stitch and we'll pull our project out. Okay, so that was the first side of the zipper. It's all nice and top stitched now with our matching thread. So now we need to sew up the other side of the zipper in the same way. But to do that, we're gonna switch the presser foot to the other side because we wanna start at the bottom of the zipper and sew in the same direction again, just to keep our fabric even and prevent any weird bunching from happening on both sides of the zipper. So we're gonna push our presser foot lever on the back 
we're going to just push that foot over and reattach it on the other side of the presser foot pin, just like that. So now the bulk of the presser foot is to the left of the needle. We're going to put our skirt back under, and it's going to be starting right at our mark again. And we don't have to sew across the zipper because we already did that, but we want to make sure that when we start, we're sewing over our beginning thread before because remember, we didn't backstitch. So you want to make sure that you do a backstitch this time over your initial stitching. I'm going to line the right side of the presser foot up with that center seam, and we'll start with a little backstitch. So I'll sew forward, backwards a few stitches, catch that thread, and now I'm just going to keep going. So this is the same idea we are stitching and keeping the presser foot lined up with that center seam. When I get up to my pull, same thing as before, we're going to have the needle down in the fabric, lift the presser foot, and push the zipper pull past the presser foot. Again, make sure if you need to, you raise that presser foot lifter even further. You can also turn the fabric as long as the needle's down if you need to get a little bit better access to the zipper pull because it's kind of getting deep down in there. All right, once it's passed, you can put your presser foot back down, keep on sewing. All righty, so when we get to the top of this side, we will do a back stitch again, just like before. Raise our needle, lift our presser foot, pull out our skirt, cut our threads. All right, so our zipper is all done sewing wise. So I'm gonna trim my thread tails just to make it a little neater. And at this point, you could go ahead and take out the basting stitches that you used to attach the zipper to the skirt. And then you can do the most exciting part, which is removing the initial basting stitches in that center seam. So you can take your seam ripper and just slip it under the fabric like this and slice right through your stitching. It should go pretty easily right along the center of the seam like this. And that will reveal your awesome zipper. Make sure you don't cut through your bottom stitches right there. And there we go. Not so bad at all. I'm in the middle of sewing a skirt and I've decided to put a blind hem on the bottom. So what is a blind hem? A blind hem is kind of magical because you can't see it from the right side, that's where it gets its name, but on the wrong side, it looks like this. So let's go over how to do a blind hem. First of all, how do you get set up to stitch so that's, that it's invisible from the right side and visible from the wrong side? I have a couple scraps here left over from cutting out my skirt, so I'm gonna show you how you fold the fabric and get set up for sewing a blind hem. So here we have a little section of fabric. I have the bottom edge of my skirt here. The WS stands for wrong side, so this is the wrong side or the inside of my skirt. And the other side is the right side. So the first thing you wanna do is finish the bottom edge of whatever you're making. So skirt, trousers, whatever you're putting a blind hem on. And in this case, I used pinking shears just to pink the edge, but you could use a zigzag stitch or whatever seam finishing method you wanna use. You want to press the hem allowance towards the wrong side, so towards the inside of your skirt, the full amount that you want to hem the fabric. So you're going to press that and make it nice and creased. Now you're going to do a special little fold. So we're going to take our whole hem and we're just going to turn and fold it towards the right side. So towards the outside of the skirt. And you want to fold it so that you see a little bit of the edge of that hem. So basically the edge that you seam finished is sticking out and there's the fold right here. Once you have that fold in place, we're going to pin it. So I'm going to pin all these layers together like this. And trying to keep that little part sticking out consistent. Just like that. So here's what it looks like all pinned and ready to sew. So you can see, again, there's a little bit sticking out right here. There's the fold, and here's what it looks like on the side. Okay, so I have my skirt all pinned up and ready to sew. I'm ready to do my blind hem on the bottom, but first I need to get my machine set up. So let's do that. 
The first thing we're gonna do to get our machine ready is change our presser foot. We're gonna change it to the blind hem foot, which is foot F on this machine. The way that the blind hem foot works is that there's a little guide right here. That's what the white part is. The guide is gonna glide right along the fold and ensure that we sew in exactly the right place. So I'm going to push the presser foot lever and take off my regular presser foot, set that aside. And this blind hem presser foot's gonna attach pretty much in the same place right on that pin right there. So I'm gonna slide that under the presser foot holder and gently lower it until it snaps into place. So now I need to select the blind hem stitch, which is stitch number nine on your direct selection menu. So I'm gonna select that right there. And I'm also going to remove the accessories tray, the removable storage compartment, because that'll just make it easier to sew around the circle of the skirt. All right, so we're gonna put the skirt under the foot with the folded side up. So I have my extra little bit of finished edge sticking out to the right, and I have my fold here. So I want to have the fold be positioned right to the left of this guide right here. So I'm gonna put the presser foot down and you'll see that the fold is going to snug right up to the white part, this guide. I'm gonna adjust the settings. So I need to know where the needle's gonna be when it sews all the way over to the left. It's going to be stitching a few stitches in the part that's sticking out and then it's gonna do a single zigzag over and grab the fold. And the goal is to have the needle just take a teeny little bite of the fold to grab just the edge of it. So I'm gonna hand crank through those stitches on the right until it gets to a stitch that goes over to the left and see where my needle's hitting. So my needle is actually hitting right on the edge of the fabric right there. I can probably even move it a little bit more. And you can either adjust the needle position by moving the width setting, so change your width. If your needle's not close to the edge of your fold, you don't want it to go too far past. You also don't want it to be too shallow. You really want it right on the edge of the fold. You can change the width settings to move the needle around if you need to do that. You can also adjust the guide with the screw right here. It's a little bit easier to just use the width setting, so the first time you do it, then maybe just try using the width to adjust the needle position. All right, so it's looking good. So I'm gonna take this first pin out, and I'm gonna start sewing. So again, the goal is to just take teeny little bites out of the fold with the needle. And as you go, you can keep turning the skirt. When you get to where your seam allowances are, it's a little bit thick there, so you might just have to help the fabric a little bit get through the machine. And it's your job to just keep that fold right along the guide. When I get back to where I started, I'm gonna do a back stitch. And then I'll lift my pressure foot, pull out my skirt, cut the threads, and here is my beautiful blind hem. So you can see that I can't see it from the right side. Here's what it looks like from the wrong side, and it's nice and securely held in place. So the last thing you'd wanna do is give it a nice press, and you are all finished. If you want more info on how to sew a blind hem, you can check out the Singer website and get it there.